All right, everyone, good evening. I uh, call the City Council Committee of the Whole meeting for March 3rd, 2021 to order. This time we'll have a moment of silence, so whatever issues you think are important, please contemplate those. Thank you, everyone. If uh, Alderman Jobson would lead us all in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Alderman Jobson. Brian Krupp, our city clerk, please call the roll. Dunn? Here. Dorman? Here. McGinnis? Here. Lee? Here. Grip? Here. Condon? Here. Peacock? Here. Dickman? Here. Jobgen? Here. And Ambrose? Here. Ten present, Your Honor. Thank you, Brian. All right, everyone, again, welcome. As we begin the meeting of the City Council Committee of the Whole, I again welcome all those in attendance and anyone who's viewing on any electronic device. Respectfully welcome your comments and opinions. But please keep in mind as you share your thoughts with our fellow Davenporters, you're also sharing with everyone throughout the region. We're happy that you're participating in our city government, your city government, um, and ask that as we reflect and share, we understand that we all have a common desire to share our thoughts with Davenport to make it a greater place for everyone and all of its citizens. At this time, if you have any electronic device in here, if you'd please put it on silent or turn it off just simply because if someone's talking, it um, doesn't interfere with that. Uh, if you want to address the council on any particular item uh, during any of the committee discussions or at the end, please come to the podium. The microphone's above you, so um, just please come to the podium, state your name, ward, or address. If you're not from here, we'd love to know where you're from. Um, when addressing the council, I ask you to please remember to be respectful, we'll be respectful of you, and try and accept all the accepted rules of courtesy, decorum, and dignity, and good taste. Thank you, everyone, for coming. City Administrator Spiegel, any updates tonight? Just a quick reminder, as we enter this beautiful spring weather week, uh, we will see more and more children out walking to school now, that it's a little safer to do so on the sidewalks than with the weather, um, and to be mindful in school zones. I think we kind of forgot with hybrid school and everything else, but with, with our Davenport kids being back full time and the weather turning, we're going to see a lot of our community youth out and about and to, to keep an eye out for them. Thank you very much. All right. We have one public hearing this evening. It's in their community development, which is Alderman Grip and Alderwoman Lee's area. Alderman Grip, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I open the public hearing for case ROW 20-02, being the request of Palmer College of Chiropractic to vacate a portion of an alley in Block 96 of LeClaire's 8th edition. Is there anyone from the public who is here to comment on this public hearing? Seeing no one, Mr. Detay, come up. State your name and address or ward, please. Do I keep my mask on talking? I'd ask talking. you to, but it's your choice. All right. Um, hi, my name is John Detay. I live at 4725 Kenilworth Drive. Uh, born and raised in Davenport. Um, attended Davenport Public Schools, St. Ambrose, and um, lived a, a block away from Genesis East when it was called St. Luke's Hospital. Um, and many, many friends that graduated from Palmer College. Um, thank you for this opportunity to speak with you. Um, my in inquiry is about this ordinance. Um, first, um, tonight's agenda, and I think everything you all do, is always balancing um, the needs of people, real estate, private business, and, and nonprofits, and that's a really hard job. Um, so thank you for all of that balancing that you do every day of your public servant lives. First, for the benefit of the new members of the city council and those who were serving on the council in 2018, um, there were four uh, disparate impact reports made on, on this proposal um, to expand the Palmer College um, campus. Three of those found disparate impacts um, where um, the, the expansion would harm um, folks with racial backgrounds, 
racial ethnicities, ethnicities, disabilities, and other um, what they call um, protected classes. The fourth um, um, fair housing expert found no disparate impact. Um, and that is the, that's the recommendation that the city followed. And I think it was, a, it was the recommendation that the city actually funded. Um, so I sent all this paperwork to you just about two hours ago. Um, but what, what, what I found when I revisited all of that was this northeast corner um, that is now part of this um, re re redesigned plan is where the Mosaic um, consultant actually recommended that if Palmer would relocate that athletic field from that northeast corner, they would be able to preserve affordable housing that was inhabited by non-students who fit this um, protected class. Though that um, demolition went forward, the athletic field is to be built, um, except now they've changed their plans. Um, I, I copied and pasted a lot of the report to you. Um, I hope you take the opportunity to read it. Um, but I finally, I concluded my email to you earlier this evening with four options. One is the city of Davenport Finance Department um, calculate how many, how much revenue will Palmer um, collect from these 115 new um, units of student housing. And because Palmer is a nonprofit, we're assuming that um, property tax will be either 100% abated or 90% abated like some of their other properties are. Um, Palmer's not alone, Genesis and Ambrose um, all own lots of parcels. And one executive at, at one of those institutions actually told me that they buy up all these parcels around their main campuses to create buffer zones between their main, main buildings and the neighborhood because there's things in the, uh, in the neighborhood that um, are not desirable. That was his word, buffers, buffer areas. So how many, how many parcels um, do those three anchor institutions of our community own? And to what extent are they paying property taxes on those and at what level? Um, I spent my life in the, working for a nonprofit. I know how valuable nonprofits are. We have to have St. Ambrose, we have to have Genesis, we have to have Palmer, um, but equitable is equitable. And, and that's your guys' job. Your, the policies and programs that you pass um, create that level infrastructure for all of us um, to thrive. Um, the third option could be a, be a community benefit agreement between the city of Davenport and Palmer to reinstate, to rebuild, create um, some of those units that we lost of affordable housing. Or fourth a or, or fourth option, or all of the above, would be a, to establish a payment of lieu, in lieu of a taxes, a pilot program with, with Palmer um, to secure a funding stream for their neighbor, the, the new Lincoln Resource Center, so that Palm, there, would be a, there would be a formal financial and programmatic relationship between Lincoln and Palmer um, that, that could really see both of those institutions thrive in the future. Um, we'll be doing more research between now and next Wednesday, so we'll probably see you again. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who wishes to comment on this public hearing? My name is Scott Tunnicliffe. I'm director of the Hilltop Campus Village. Appreciate taking the time. City Council, Your Honor. Um, the project that's being proposed here for 115 units for Palmer College is a part of a massive growth plan that has the potential the very real potential to revitalize the very urban core that people are concerned of. You need reinvestment. You need the access to employment. You need the other elements that can give real value to people that want to decide where they're going to live. I would just suggest that if there are other options or other peoples that are looking for affordable housing, 
I would be delighted to meet with some folks and talk to them about some vacant level land uh, that's owned by a party here in the Hilltop Campus Village that's not a party of this. We don't have to take down proposed plans that are gonna have a positive impact on the long-term future of the entire city in order to redevelop other vacant ground. That's all I got. Except that this parcel is not in the Hilltop Campus Village. It's across the street. So uh, we have some skin in the game, but nothing direct. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who wishes to comment on this public hearing? Seeing no one, I move to close the public hearing. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The public hearing is closed. Back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Grip. Next item is petitions and communications from council members or mayor. Anyone from the council? Alderman Jobson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, be brief. One of the things that I do um, on the side is uh, help run and coach a youth wrestling organization here in, in Davenport. And this past weekend was the AU State Tournament, which is kind of the culmination of the season. So we're A, glad to have a season, uh, B, glad to have this. And I want to just give a shout out to one of the wrestlers, a young gentleman that's an eighth grader at Williams Intermediate by the name of Justin Bass, who was a state champion, bested a 32 wrestler bracket after qualifying for this tournament and uh, defeating uh, an opponent that had beaten him twice already during the season. So just a great uh, testament of, of fortitude, willing to overcome obstacles and, and improve. A uh, great kid who did great things, and I just want to give him a shout out here tonight. So thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Jobson. Alderman Ambrose. Thank you, Honor. First off, uh, Davenport lost the great civic leader, and Steve Duffy served on a lot of commissions over the years and represented the fourth ward on the Parks Advisory Commission. He'll be surely missed. And kind of tied in with what City Administrator Corey Spiegel said about the snow and public safety and watching out for the kids. As the snow melts, you know, we're going to see the aftermath of a long, bitter winter. There will be a lot of debris. So in order to keep our city, America's greatest city, and nice and clean, I would encourage everybody to go out and pick up around their neighborhood. And if they need any help, uh, give the mayor a call. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. Anyone else? Alderwoman Lee. Thank you. Um, I had the opportunity today to listen to um, Senators Durbin and Senators Duckworth, Senator Duckworth, to um, talk about what's coming up in Congress. And um, it sounds like the first bill, which should be um, discussed next week in the Senate, is, of course, the COVID bill, which this one does have money for um, counties and cities, as well as states that have been affected by COVID. And um, the next most important one is the infrastructure bill. And this one is going to be much broader than just roads and bridges and dams and that kind of thing. They're recognizing that if you tear up a road, you should fix the sewer underneath it at the same time. They have a lot of water projects, including um, um, reclamation, um, sewer systems, waterways, they are looking at um, the locks and dams on the Mississippi River. And so I think we're going to have some serious potential to be able to compete for some grants and funding from the federal government when um, these two laws pass, these two bills go through the Senate. Um, and I'm bringing this up because I've talked to most of you about this. Um, I am sponsoring a resolution that talks about energy conservation, resiliency, climate change, um, stormwater management, uh, things that in many cases we've already started doing, but we're looking for the support of the city council. So I think it's, um, from what I heard today, it's quite timely in the opportunity to be able to get uh, compete uh, with the backing of the city council and city staff 
to be able to compete for funds. Thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman Lee. Anyone else? All right, and then I'll just say uh, to Ms. Spiegel uh, and to everyone, but uh, we have uh, been in a, a pause for a long time. And prior to COVID, we had a pretty good uh, uh, reputation of honoring our youth here uh, at City Council. Alderman Jobson spun my head. I had a note, but then he made me think. So I'd like to see if we could start working that back in. What we have done in the past is any state championship team, any recognized particular individual that goes above and beyond uh, in Davenport, and especially in our schools that does something, we, we recognize them here. So I'm just saying I'd like to try and work that back in and start doing that. So um, my fellow colleagues here uh, will we'll start doing that if you're okay with that. But uh, um, I think it's about time that we start getting back to recognizing our youth that do wonderful things here. So thank you. All right. We already did, Ms. Lee, so we're moving on. Okay. Is it a short? I'll just let oh, you. Oh, I was just going to ask if we could uh, make sure that that includes academic recognition. We can certainly talk about that. I think that's a wonderful idea. All right. Um, anyone else? Just in case. Very good. Action items for discussion. We have four areas, community development, public safety, public works, and finance. So the first area is community development, led by Alderman Griff and Alderwoman Lee. Alderman Griff. Thank you, Your Honor. We'll get right into it. Item number one is a third consideration ordinance for case REZ 20-08, being the request of MCC Iowa LLC on behalf of MM Development LLC to rezone 5000 Grand Avenue from RMF Multifamily Residential District to I-1 Light Industrial District to allow for construction of a communications building to house and operate electronics and fiber optic cables. Is there anyone from the public here to comment on this agenda item? Anyone from the council care to comment? Seeing no one, this item will move on. Item number two is a second consideration, ordinance for case REZ 20-09, being the request of SJ Russell, LC, on behalf of the Sophie Foster Revocable Trust to rezone the property located at 4607 East 53rd Street to C2 Corridor, Commercial District and RMF Multifamily Residential District. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment on this item? Please step to the lectern, state your name and address or ward, please. <clears throat> My name is Jimmy Clifford. I live at 4530 East 49th Court, Davenport. Uh, at prior council meetings, uh, it was discussed that neighborhood traffic concerns had been addressed with the elimination of connections to Eastbury Estates. It was also noted that this was the highest concern for opposition. I want to make note that when the Davenport residents filed their formal opposition, there was no connection to the Eastbury Estates in the proposal. Concerns were with density of housing and the proximity to rental units was and still is an issue. The townhouses and duplexes are proposed to be retailed to owner occupants, but that's not guaranteed. I have personal experience converting duplexes from owner operated to uh, rentals. And um, you know that can happen. And, and, uh, the uh, R4 and RMF allow much smaller lots than our existing adjacent homes, which are not at the minimum of R2, they're wider. Uh, the developer has agreed to build only duplexes on the perimeter of the development. However, his plans show still maximizing the number of units by using minimum lot size. They are showing 34 residents adjacent to 18 homes on 49th and Dove Court. That's almost two to one. This is achieved by putting all lots at the minimum allowable size. Even with duplexes and landscape barriers, we will see an almost continuous wall of repetitive plain structures looking out our back doors. This is still a very weak transition from multifamily to single family neighborhood. The developers also proposed wet retention ponds for stormwater control. Neighbors have expressed concern with child safety and the attraction of geese and all the things that go with geese. Uh, the developer noted observations of, of detention ponds that do not drain well and become wetlands. I've lived in multiple communities with properly constructed dry detention ponds that do not become wetlands. Can be done correctly. Uh, traffic on 53rd Street will increase. We've heard a lot of discussion about that. 
The current zoning restrictions for the commercial are limited to professional type buildings and developers indicated they will be open to, to develop retail establishments that will have a higher traffic level and the potential for late night noise and vehicle lights impacting the neighbors in the northern section of our neighborhood. In summary, the developers have made some positive concessions to address some of the opposition, but I'm requesting more aggressive transition between our existing neighborhoods or rejection of the rezoning proposal. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who wishes to comment on this item? All right. We'll go to council comment. Uh, Alderman Jobjian. Thanks, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, again, briefly, uh, kind of reiterating uh, what uh, Mr. Clifford said. Um, you know, there there is a sentiment of wanting to uh, accept accept the rezoning proposal with with conditions. You know, um, been working with the petitioners, uh, speaking with them even today. So, you know, I think we're continuing to move forward in that regard, which is again a positive a positive thing. Just a few T's and a couple of I's to dot. Um, so hopefully next week. We'll be able to, uh, you know, present something to to council, which has been agreed upon by the petitioners, and and so then when it comes time to vote, we can we can have a uh, second consideration. But overall, again, uh, the sentiment has been from from the neighbors that if if proper conditions are met, then they they would like to see this land develop, see it rezoned, and, and move forward. So that's that's where the ball's going. Um, again. I think we take into consideration, um, um, you know, statements and, and uh, opinions that are brought forth by by these residents that have very valid concerns. Thank you. Can I ask a point of clarification from you? So, are you saying that you by next week you'll be able to provide those conditions? Like you're going to spend the next week? Uh, I would having those discussions. Yes, I would. I would like to. There's some. There's some engineering that we have. Some information we have to get from engineering. Uh, I don't know if I can speak freely, but one of the things looking to do is vacate a section of uh, Eastbury Lane, Eastbury Estates Lane, or I always say it wrong. Um, and so, just need to get some information to uh, the petitioner. We don't want to have them cut a blank check and say we're gonna. Yep, we'll we'll vacate this and then and then throw. So so. Uh, we're asking Brian Schatz to provide a little bit of information, and then again, some of these some of these other items that uh, we spoke about and trying to negotiate, just gathering a little bit of information. So yes, by next Wednesday, I would be hopeful that we can kind of put this to rest, know where we're going, um, so, so that uh, uh, we can vote properly um, on second consideration. And as soon as I have that information, I will share share that with my fellow council members. But, Answer your question. Yes, it did. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alderwoman McGinner. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask staff again to just go over again. It probably would be you, Laura, and I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, but you know, my understanding of what we've heard here last week and and sort of the back history of this um, land is that if the current zoning were um, in other words, if the multifamily, if the current zoning for the residential was left, it could be all, it could be all duplexes, and it would have to connect through to the neighborhood. It's limited correct? to fifty percent duplex, okay. um, two two family, but yes, they would be still be able to do the the duplex. Right, and it would have to connect through to the neighborhood. That is correct. Okay, and there is also for now for the commercial part. There, section there is also a limit on the number of buildings yes and the request is to add more buildings so, so the what um, the petitioner has presented is a concept plan only uh, mm -hmm. so what you're looking at is not a final product per se uh, it's probably pretty close to it um, so I don't know if Caitlin you want to speak to that in, in a little more detail on, on what kind of uses uh, they're planning on uh, but at, at this point, there is no conditions tied to the number of buildings. Okay. Yeah. And I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, oh, I'm it, sorry. In regards yeah, to one of, yeah, one of the concerns I have is that, again, this came, this is the second time that I've been on council that this has been, and there was very strong 
when, when that plan was approved, when that zoning was approved, there were to be no vehicular type businesses at the edges of this property, at the front. They were not to be there, and it seems that that may be what's being proposed, and I'm concerned about that because that was a specific uh, trying to take into account the existing housing that was there, that it be that it be office type buildings that probably wouldn't be occupied at night, that there wouldn't be drive through, there wouldn't be cars coming through doing anything on those edges. So, uh, so have, where are you on that? If you could help yeah, me. I understand the concern and would love to be able to adhere to the current zoning that was been put in place in 2011. I'm Caitlin Russell, a uh, petitioner. And unfortunately, there's just not the demand for the office space that we would want to, to, to do that. And we feel that the extension of our current development across the street would be kind of in concert with this development. So uh, just demand, demand changes, and that's why we aren't adhering or requesting a change from the 2011. So you've not been able to change that. There is plans right now for vehicular type businesses on the edges. Uh, right now, the plan that you're the, the okay. plan is uh, uh, businesses geared towards consumers. So uh, the types of uses is not solidified. It's not set in stone as to who is where, but the the uses would all fall within the C two. So it could be a bank, for example. It's a C two category. Uh, category, but um, but a bank is a very different thing than a gas station, a, you know, a convenience store. It's a very different. It's a very different impact on the neighborhood, and that's my concern. Yeah. So, but you've answered my question, and I appreciate that. Thank yep. you. Anyone else from the council uh, wish to wish to comment on that? All right. Not seeing anyone. It, you know. I, I will make a comment on the um, uh, drive-through establishments or auto-centric establishments. And we had this conversation with the rezoning on Kimberly Road just a few years ago. And, uh, you know, eventually the, the council voted down a drive-through establishment on Kimberly. And one of my questions is, if you can't put a drive-through establishment on your arterial uh, corridor streets in your community. Where where is it acceptable to have a drive-through establishment? And that's kind of a philosophical zoning question, but I, I think um, I, I fall fall in the position of we do not want uh, drive-through establishments in places that are pedestrian focused, but in places that are auto focused, uh, it's an acceptable use. So if I look at our downtown, I don't want a lot of I don't want any uh, drive-through establishments in our downtown, but if I look at our uh, commercial corridors, uh, Locust Street and, and North, it seems perfectly acceptable. Um, now, I, I will kind of just uh, sum up what I heard, which is uh, Alderman Jogjin has taken into uh, account uh, the concerns he's hearing from his neighbors, he, uh, the neighborhood. He's been in uh, dialogue with them. He is working with the petitioner to see uh, what conditions would be acceptable to them and uh, potentially would make a recommendation next week um, with conditions. And so uh, by next week, we, we should know exactly what we'll be voting on uh, when we vote on it. Fair? Okay. So that's where we're at. Uh, seeing no one else. Oh, uh, Mayor Matson. So thank you, Mr. Chair, for letting me speak. I just want to uh, thank both the residents, the petitioners, Alderman Jobes and anyone else that's doing, um, Alderman Ambrose and I have, and, and Alderman Dunn have listened to this discussion um, and voted, quite frankly, on this discussion in this area for over a decade. And we really, quite frankly, have not come to really in a resolution. I think that's being worked, and I applaud you for that, Mr. Jobes, and I applaud everybody that's involved to try and come together, and, and that's what we need to do nowadays is find a consensus, work together, be um, respectful of each other's wishes and try and solve a problem. So it, um, I won't applaud you 100% yet, but it looks like <laughs> we're, we're applauding 90%. So thank you for, for everyone to try and work this out. That, that, that's significantly different than what has happened before, and I, and I thank you for that. All right. 
Item number two uh, will remain on discussion and we will move to item number three, which is a second consideration ordinance for case ORD 20-02, being the request of Palmer College of Chiropractic to amend a section of the campus master plan bounded by East 11th Street and East 10th Street between Pershing Avenue and Perry Street from an athletic field to student housing. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment on this item? Is there anyone from the council who wishes to comment on this item? All right, seeing no one, I, I will just, uh, I'll, I'll ask that uh, last week we identified that there was one uh, community member with a, an issue uh, related to parking. Um, from the petitioner, is there any update that you can provide to the council on where those discussions are? Hi, Dennis Marchiori, Chancellor at Palmer College. Uh, uh, Alderman Grip, I would provide a continued update that we're continuing to, uh, to have conversations with that particular neighbor, uh, Gary Schombeck, and... Um, and we hope that they have a positive resolution. I can go through detail of exactly what those conversations are if you're interested or if your only request was, are they continuing? Yes, they are. Okay, yeah, I think what, what we asked last week is just that um, we, we'll keep it on discussion and understand that you are having those conversations with, with your neighbor. And uh, if at any point you need city staff to, to step in and help you with those conversations, please let us know. Uh, but otherwise, we'll con through this six-week process, we'll continue to check in uh, to see if you've been able to resolve the issue. Wonderful. And I would like to make the comment that the city staff has been very helpful in uh, providing resource and defining the conversation. Okay. Thank you, sir. Seeing no one else from the council, uh, we'll move on to item number four, which is a second consideration ordinance for case ROW 20-02 being the request of Palmer College of Chiropractic for the vacation of the public right-of-way known as East 11th Street between Perry Street and Pershing Avenue and a portion of an alley in Block 89 of LeClaire's 8th edition. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment on this item? Anyone from the council? See no one, this item moves on. Item number five is a first consideration ordinance for case ROW 20-02 being the request of Palmer College of Chiropractic to vacate, vacate a portion of an alley in block 96 of LeClaire's eighth edition. Anyone from the public? Anyone from the council? This item moves on. Item number six, a resolution approving Case F21-01 being the request of Shuri Limited Partnership for a final plat of West Lake Business Park, fourth edition on 3.2 acres being a replat of lot two in West Lake Business Park, third edition, located at 7630 Lewis Rich Court containing two industrial lots. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment on this item? Anyone from the council? Seeing no one, this item will move on. Alderwoman Lee, would you please set our agenda? Thank you, Alderman Grip. I move that items one through five be placed on the discussion agenda and item six be placed on the consent agenda. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That concludes community development this evening. Back to you, Your Honor. Thank you. I was just giving a thumbs up to Mr. Smith in the back who's managing our technology. So we're tracking now. So thank you. Next area is public safety. Alderman Ambrose and Alderman Jobson will discuss. Alderman Ambrose, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I open a discussion with a third consideration ordinance amending chapter 12.72 entitled Conduct in the Parks to add a new section 12.72.095 that prohibits the use of tobacco, nicotine products in the parks and parks facilities. Anybody from the public? Council? Alderman Jobson. Thanks, Alderman Ambrose. Um, I will be making a motion here just to leave this on discussion so next week um, can introduce an exemption for uh, this amendment, amendment, amendment to the ordinance um, to exempt uh, 
on golf courses during the course of play. And so just a little FYI, and hopefully we can get some wording on that before. All right. Thanks, Alderman Junction. McGinnis. McGinnis. Oh, okay. Alderwoman McGinnis. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. I am, I am, I will just say bluntly, I am concerned that we would consider an amendment. I will not vote for. Um, why are, uh, you know, golf is, I know, uh, practiced by many, but it is still somewhat a sport of privilege. Um, uh, or why are, would we be exempting um, one sport and not uh, baseball, you know, basketball, um, any, all, all kinds of other activities that are happening in the parks? It really doesn't make any sense. I think it's a little bit embarrassing that we would be considering this, and I'm certainly not going to, uh, would not support that. Thank you, Your Honor. Alderman Dorman. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. I also echo uh, Alderwoman McGinnis's comments that, uh, <clears throat> you know, where do you draw the line of what, where smoking should be allowed, where should smoking not be allowed? Uh, another one that kind of comes to my mind of where you might get pushback from this ordinance in general would be the riverfront and uh, people fishing. Uh, a lot of times if you're fishing to have a beer and a cigarette might sound good while you wait in there for something to bite on your fishing pole. And uh, that, that's kind of the same concept with golf that I know people do smoke while golfing and uh, it, it may help uh, e ease the, the nerves of golfing and um, it may be an activity that those people would like to continue to do on the golf course. But the, the point of this ordinance was to uh, take a, a bold stance against smoking, which uh, we did in bars and restaurants way back when, but somehow uh, just now we're doing for our city parks with the thought that, uh, you know, uh, children or kids, I guess, not, not necessarily children, but kids, high school kids in particular, are on our golf courses where our, our school golf teams are, are out in there um, participating in, in golf on our golf courses. And so should they be looking up to other people who are smoking and, and seeing that uh, that is an activity that they should do while smoking or while playing golf as well. And so that's kind of my thought process of, of why I would not be in favor of amending the ordinance for golfing and, and keeping it um, where it is that smoking is banned in all parks uh, and all activities throughout the city of Davenport. Thank you. All right, Alderman Dorma. Alderman Griff. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. Um, I know sometimes the, the dais isn't the, the best play to, place to engage in the conversation, but I think um, as I thought about this from, from your comments yesterday, Alderman Jobjen, is I, I'm curious uh, what you see the difference being in, in a golf course compared to the other parks and why you think there should be an exemption. So um, if you have an answer now, great. Otherwise, uh, when you bring up the amendment, I'm, I'm just curious about your, your reasoning there. I don't want to put you on the spot. Thank you. Alderwoman Dickman. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to, um, I guess, voice a concern about the amendment as well. Um, you know, when we're talking about smoking in public parks, you know, there's the freedom for people to smoke, but then there's also the council has to consider the freedom of the people who don't want to have smoke around them. I personally am someone who does not like cigarette smoke around me at all. Um, and I would be interested, I guess we'll see if anyone ends up reaching out in the next week um, to say whether or not they prefer the freedom to smoke or the freedom from smoking. Um, but my estimation would be that more people would prefer the freedom from smoke than would be happy to have the freedom to smoke. Um, so I cannot see myself currently supporting it. the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman Dickman. Alderman Condon. Um, I apologize. I wasn't able to be in attendance yesterday, but uh, the question that I would have had is um, if Mr. Dyson by next week, you could give us some sort of an opinion or, or uh, data because the, the one unique thing about a golf course is that we rely on uh, people paying to golf on them. And I want to be curious what your opinion is or data as to how we would compete with other local golf courses. 
Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Condon. Alderwoman Lee. Thank you, Alderman um, Ambrose. Uh, I would definitely like to exempt disc golf courses from this golf courses uh, amendment. You know, I, pending your reason for, for doing this, but disc golf courses are in the park, uh, public park. So I'd like to make sure that that's clearly exempted from this. All right, thank you, Alderman Lee. I've been on the council a while, and this has come up many times. It never went anywhere because to enforce this, it's impossible. You know, we, our poor police department struggles to enforce and take care of the hardened criminals. So when you have someone smoking in what, 11, 1200 acre of parks, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's foolish to even think about doing this. What we might do is put up signs that say, please don't smoke and uh, leave it at that. But you know, I'm only one or nine, so anybody else? All right. Number two is a third consideration ordinance amending schedule 11 of chapter 10.96 <clears throat> entitled resident parking only by adding Sturdivant Street along the west side of the alley north of 12th Street to 13th Street. Anybody from the public? Council. Number three is a resolution approving street, lane, or public ground closures on the listed dates and time to hold outdoor events. The first one is the office, St. Patrick's Day celebration, 116 West 3rd Street, 10 a.m. Saturday, March 13th, to 2 a.m. Sunday, March 14th. Closure is the sidewalk in front of 116 West 3rd Street. From the public council. Number two is St. Paul Lutheran Church Palm Sunday Outdoor Worship Service, 2136 Brady Street, Sunday, March 28th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Closure is Lombard Street between Main Street and Brady Street. Anybody from the public council? Number three is St. Paul Lutheran Church Easter Outdoor Worship Service, 2136 Brady Street, Sunday, April 4th, 5.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Closure is High Street between Main Street and Brady Street and North Alley from Pleasant Street to High Street between Brady Street and Main Street. You got that? Anybody from the public council? <coughs> Number four is Stickman Racing Group, Easter Egg Scramble, 5K, Saturday, April 3rd, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Closure is 11th Street from Mound Street to Hillcrest Avenue, East River, East River Street, Jersey Ridge Road from East 11th Street to Middle Road, Middle Road from Jersey Ridge to East Mere Drive, East Mere Drive from Middle Road to the city limits, Wood Lane, city limits to Forest Road, Forest Road Boulevard from Wood Lane to Edge Hill Terrace, Edge Hill Terrace from McCullen Boulevard to East River Street to East River Street from East River Drive to Hillcrest. If you want to know those directions, they will be on uh, the city social media website. Anybody from the public council? Okay, and the last one is Top Notch Productions Incorporated. Mark Hayes, Good S Quad City Symphony Orchestra presents an evening with Renee El Elise Goldsboro, 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. February, May 14th to 6 a.m. Sunday, May 16th. The closure is Harrison Street, and Ripley Street South the River Drive. Do we have someone from staff to explain what, what this is a little more than allowing me to highlight it? Brian, do you think you can handle it? I can try. Um, so everyone knows the Symphony Orchestra has the Pops concert every year. They're doing this additional event. Renee Goldsberry was in the play Hamilton. Um, so they're just having an additional event this year. Um, they just closed uh, Pearson Street and Ripley Street south of River Drive because um, it is a paid concert. 
um, and they have vendors set up and everything. So, so it's going to be outside. Correct. Yep. And they did say, uh, depending on where we're at with COVID, they might do what they did last year with the Pops concert, where they sold them in sections of I think six to eight uh, in a group. Um, you know, and they'll section them off and space them out and everything. So. They well, said they'll address that Brian, later. Brian, thanks a lot. And hopefully by then, the mayor will uh, lift his executive order and allow the city to really have some fun this year. Alderwoman Lee. Thank you very much, Alderman <laughs> Ambrose. Um, I bought tickets to this. I'm very excited. They are doing it by sectioning off the, um, the area along in, in LeClaire Park. Um, and some of the areas are smaller than others, so you might have two. That you, you get to buy the lot that you want. Um, I also went to the Symphony in the Park last year, uh, the Pops, and it worked very, very well, uh, masks and all. <laughs> and you knew I was going to say that. <laughs> I know. Right. Everybody should wear two masks, right? Well, yes, that's what CDC is saying. All right. So anyway, Let's it was Stay focused well. here. Right, thank you, <laughs> Alderwoman Alder Lee. Number four is motions approving the following noise variance request for events on the listed dates and time. The Office St. Dach St. Patrick's Day celebration, 128 West 3rd Street, Saturday, March 13th, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Outdoor music over 50 dBA. Members of the public, the council. The second one is Dan Buin St. Patrick's Day celebration, 410 East 2nd Street, Saturday, March 13th, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Outdoor music, 50 over 50 dBA. Anybody for the public? Yes. Council? The last one is the Mississippi Valley Fair, 2815 West Locust Street, various dates and times, April through October 2021. See if you, know, if you have any questions, that's our race dates and other events. And number five is a motion proving beer and liquor license. We won't go through them, but if you want to, you can find them in our social media platform. Alderman Jobjian, please set the agenda. Uh, Alderman? Yes, Alderman Lee. Um, is there going to be public comment on this as well? Because I'd like to say something to the council. Well, you can say it. You're on the council. Well, no, I, I'm, I'm just saying, is, does the public have an opportunity? Yeah, they had the opportunity. Is someone here that would like to speak to it? Okay, okay, let's protect our rules here. So yeah. what are we asking for? I, asking? I, I just wanted to say something about... You, th that's a different discussion. Public and you is different. So if you yeah. want to speak. Okay. okay, I just wanted to make sure I was speaking. Um, it's kind of a fizzle philosophical, but it's um, in Ward 7, Jesse's Mart at 3721 North Division Street, um, asking for a licensed typey liquor. And I was wondering if you could put that map up. Please. Um, this is North Division Street. There's Kimberly on the top. Um, the area that um, that this corporation wants to open a, a brand new liquor store is the C3 there at 38th and Division. It's the uh, former's Burks Cleaners, uh, and and that is it's closed. So. Interestingly enough, you can see that all the green is residential zoning. Um, the light tan is all C1, which is basically neighborhood businesses. You've got the vi um, family video that's closing with Marco's Pizza, which is staying open. You've got US Bank. You've got a, um, a small hardware store. You've got a Maid Right. Uh, you've got um, a Genesis clinic that is closed and looking to sell. So you've got a lot of neighborhood type businesses there. And then in the middle of all this, you've got C3. I mean, even to the north along Kimberly is C2. This is not the fault of the company that wants to do this. It's an anomaly within the zoning that I just wanted to point out that somehow um, because it was a cleaners, even though it was not uh, a, a place that actually did the cleaning, Burks would go over by Calls um, Ballroom to do their cleaning. So this was a, uh, an area that was a small retail. You, you drop off and pick up there. So the chances of contamination were very small. 
So this is a, a new liquor license. Um, there has been uh, letters went out because it is a new business for liquor in this particular site. So letters went out to um, businesses and residences within 200 feet. We did get um, somebody in opposition to this, send it in. Um, I guess one of the things that I, I just like, um, Tom, if you would mind just explaining the situation about um, liquor licenses and if somebody wanted to object and how it relates to state law. Sure, thank you, Alderwoman Lee. Uh, in this particular situation, um, as it is zone C3, they can, they can get a class E liquor license. So zoning does not prohibit it, it's mm -hmm. allowed. If it were C1, it would be prohibited, but, but it's not. Um, so the zoning's proper. Now you take a look at um, the rules on denying a license in Iowa. And really a council's, rec a council's denial is only a recommendation for denial. And the people at the Iowa Alcoholic Beverages Division will overturn those. We've experienced that before <laughs> many times. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this particular, I recognize the, the name on it uh, of the company, and I know they have other licenses with us, and we haven't had trouble with, with those licenses. So there's really nothing the, the council mm -hmm. can do uh, to, to not have this go through. Even if you said no to the license, um, the people in Ankeny will overturn that, and they'll get their license. Um, now, you might ask why we notify the residents. I think it's to let them know uh, that this change is coming. Uh, they can come to the meetings to find out exactly what it is, if, if, the, if the petitioner or contact staff to get more information. Additionally, with the class, uh, class E, we have two, two city code sections, uh, 5.10.106 uh, and 5.10. Point one oh seven that talk about what they have to do as far as um, processes, security, uh, and also environmental things in, in 107. So it helps alert the neighbors to those issues and they can help us uh, to see and make sure that the, the business is complying. Thank Thanks, you. Tom. Thank you very much. Um, this is in, in my area. I don't live down in the green. I live to the north a little bit, but I used to frequent Burke's cleaners. So the parking is very tight there. So whatever's done there, we've got to make sure that it's safe for access on 38th and onto Division and that there is um, sufficient parking for that type of, of building as we look at it with the city. And the other thing is I would just like to ask um, um, CD, uh, and, and the zoning folks to uh, continue their looking for these types of anomalous zoning issues, similar to what um, Alderman McGinnis brought up about another zoning type. So, because th this is an odd one, and, and you can see it. So, All right. um, I just wanted to talk philosophically about Thank that. You, Thank you, Alderman Lee, for sharing your concerns. Alderman McGinnis. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. Um, I just, it was just a point of order because typically, as you said, we don't read through these, but these had 200 foot letters. These were letters mailed for this one. Um, I just wanted to make sure if there's some way, if we have look, overlooked anybody who was at this meeting who came to speak about this because of the way we don't read these out, it's not, we don't ask everyone, does anybody have any questions? So is there a way we can ask that question? I'm asking Alderman Ambrose or, so, or the mayor. So Just yes. to make sure. Yep, so if an older woman or older man asks for something, then that's certainly oh. appropriate. Okay. Um, it's up to the chair to dis, you know, decide how the public happens in this, and the, prior, the way Mr. Ambrose has done it is we don't. But if an older person asks for it, that's quite a different discussion and that we're open to that. All right, so I would ask if we could, um, and I don't know if there's anybody here, but we could make sure people understand if they're here, they can speak. They can speak. So that's right. what I'm asking. Anybody want to speak? Alderman 
or your honor you have something to say don't you i do i have one comment from somebody uh, just so everybody knows um, during COVID, if someone has sent something to the mayor's office concerning an agenda item uh, i read it into the record so i have one uh, concerning this particular on behalf of my sister and her husband margaret and bill default who reside in 1666 west 37th street in davenport reaching out to the mayor's office to voice an objection to a pending request to establish a liquor store at 3721 North Division. The requester is um, every neighbor that has been contacted at this, at this early juncture is opposed to the former Brooks Cleaners building being turned into a liquor store. They are apprehensive about the likelihood of uh, crime, vandalism, and problems with litter becoming reality in their own backyard. My sister and her husband share those feelings, as do I. As a point of reference, I'm very aware of the detrimental influence that the infamous of Brady Mart has had on its surrounding area. So please do not let this request for an alcohol license at 3721 North Division go any further. Feel free to contact or respond. Thank you for your attention, Timothy Garcia. Thank you. Thank you, Honor. Alderman. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. Uh, I, I did want to also comment on the uh, the Jesse's Mart liquor store at, uh, or uh, Petro Mart at uh, 3721 North Division Street. So I, I understand that the effort is futile and that if the, the, the city council uh, votes this down, that the liquor license will still be approved by the state. Um, but a, as an exercise, I, I think it's worth the, the council's time to continue to push back to the state of Iowa and their control that they have over liquor license and the impact that it has on uh, the negative impact that it has on our neighborhoods. Uh, now, I have nothing against uh, the, the business owners. By all accounts, they're very good business owners who keep a good shop. Um, I do have objections with continuing to put uh, liquor stores in, in uh, working class and, and poor neighborhoods, which, which is where they go. And the truth is we do not have as much control as we want, um, but I believe strongly in this. Uh, having liquor stores in neighborhoods is bad for the neighbors and the community. Um, and I think every time we have a chance to bring this up to the state of Iowa and try to uh, raise the concern and bring back more local control on this, I think we should. So uh, understanding they will be granted the, the liquor license by the state, I will vote no on this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Group. Your Honor. Thank you again for letting me speak again, Mr. Ambrose. Tom, uh, I know we did a request to our state legislatures uh, for... Uh, having some more local control authority to go to a district court. Any movement, any discussion? If you don't, can't answer now, I'm fine if you want to look that up. But I know we've asked. Yeah, if we could, if you, if we could just respond in writing, um, that would be great. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Ambrose. You know, yeah, I guess my opinion is I want everybody to have the opportunity to live the American dream. But the important part is we want people to be good neighbors. And like our city attorney said, this organization has a good track record. You know, we have plenty of challenges in our great city, but to allow someone on the assumption there's gonna be a problem, you know, that's, uh, that's not very fair. We have several establishments within a half mile of that area that sell liquor. So, no one knows more than I do in Alderman Woman McGinnis. So, <laughs> Alderman Jogjan, please set the agenda. I move to place item number one and uh, Jesse's Mart item under number five on discussion agenda and the rest on consent agenda. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. And please remember when you want to know the routes again, call Alderman Ambrose. So the next area, let's check. Uh, Public Works, Alderman Dunn and Alderman Dormer will lead. Alderman Dunn, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I have two items this evening for Public Works. The first item is a resolution approving the contract for the DOT full depth patching program to Hawkeye Paving Corporation of Bettendorf, Iowa, in the amount of 154 thousand three hundred thirty dollars is there anyone from the public wish to address this item council Alderman Madsen. mayor Madsen. thanks Sorry. for the promotion <laughs> um miss gleason not now uh by next if you could just 
give us an update. Hawkeye's been cool, done everything you've asked, et cetera. I'd uh, like to have an update. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none on this item, we'll move on. Item number two is a motion approving the installation of services, security cameras, and the parking ramps to Davenport Electric Contract Company and Tri-City Electric in the amount of $20,908 and $35,980 respectively. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. And Alderman Dorman, would you set the agenda for us, please? I move to place item number one and item number two on the consent agenda. We have a motion and a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. And that will conclude public works for this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you, Alderman Dunn. Last item is our area, I, saw, I apologize, finance. Alderman Condon and Alderman Peacock will lead that discussion. Alderman Condon. Thank you, Your Honor. We have three items on finance. Um, the first item is a resolution approving the contract for construction of the Davenport Fire Department Training Center at the Public Works Facility to Read Construction LLC of DeWitt, Iowa, in the amount of $297,100. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Alderman Ambrose. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can the fire chief come up and for the public explain how important it is to have this training center? Mike Carlson, fire chief. Um, we feel it's very important to have a training center. This is in the center of the city of Davenport so our crews can respond while training. Um, it's downsized from what we had before, but we're going to have over 1,200 square foot of indoor classroom, about 800 square foot outside classroom, and restroom facilities. And this is part of a complex. So, Chief, it's important that in order to have the greatest fire department in the country, we have to have these uh, abilities to train and keep the top notch fire department we have. And I thank you for your leadership. Thank you. If no one else, that item will move on. Um, item number two is a resolution approving the three-year contract for Microsoft purchased through the state of Iowa contract with Insight Public Sector of Des Moines, Iowa in the amount of $568,217.25. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address that item? Council, Alderman Dorman. Thank you, Alderman Condon. Just a quick note with this that um, I, I'm fine with the services as they are, but as we continue to grow as a society and specifically get more uh, technology and uh, grow with the business capabilities that uh, specifically Microsoft has and plenty of other companies, I hope that when this contract comes up, we can um, consider maybe uh, investing in our own business of being the city of Davenport to get our people um, maybe some of the nicer uh, Microsoft uh, perks that they have that could directly help us be more efficient and effective as a government. So I know that's always a goal of ours and technology and specifically um, Microsoft, they have the capability to help us do that. So I want to keep that on our minds when we uh, uh, approve this and think about software purchases that we have as a city. So, thank you. Thank you, Alder Dorman. Seeing no one else, that item will move on. And the third item is a motion approving the annual payment for our pure storage to Insight Public Sector of Des Moines, Iowa, in the amount of $69,187.44. Anyone from the public wishing to address that item? Council? That item can move on. and. Uh, Below there, we have purchases from 10,000 to 50,000. We don't read each of those out loud, but they're listed there for your information. Alderman Peacock, will you please set the agenda? I move to place all items on the consent agenda. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Sorry. And that concludes finance. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Condon. Um, so good. Are there any other ordinances, resolutions, the motion? There are not tonight. Is there any public with business about anything outside of what was on the agenda? 
Please come to the podium, state your name, ward or address, and if you're not from here, we'd love to know where you're from, and you'll have five minutes, please. Mary Rourke, 5th Ward, 2623 Sheridan. Um, with the sewer bill, um, got my, you know, we've all seen that this past week, so I have some thoughts about this newsletter. For one thing, I like the thing about the information about the um, investigations and cameras that would help the police, that's great. I thought um, these are nice graphics here about locking your car. But since I had a church friend that had a car stolen a month ago and they, fortunately the, the vehicle was dumped on my street <laughs> without any damage to the vehicle, but maybe some information um, saying how many cars are stolen, it only takes 10 seconds, rather than just saying lock your car, when people have information, they might be more careful. So I would just like to suggest that for a future newsletter. Um, the last thing on this newsletter, this is practically not readable. The phone number's gray on gray. So again, if you have that, um, do that. You know, black on white, especially for us old people. <laughs> um, lastly, um, this is something I want to discuss after the meeting. But I saw something in a newspaper, it was not the Quad City Times, about school resource officers, and I'd like to talk to Chief Sikorsky afterwards, but if anyone would like to give me any information, I have a friend who's a retired school teacher. She thinks school resource officers are awesome, and uh, suggested in a newspaper that I read this past week about maybe substituting social workers. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Going on? Okay, very good. Are there any other reports, Ms. Spiegel? Very good. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Have a good evening. <laughs>